Thank you everyone, thanks for coming today. Um, again, I'm Wendell Young with OPPD. I just wanna give you an update on where we stand in our outage restoration efforts. Um, as the mayor mentioned, we were over 200,000 out at the peak of the storm uh, last night. We responded immediately, um, calling in crews and dispatching crews out to begin the restoration efforts. Um, at this time, we were about 38% restored. That's uh, nearly 80,000 customers that are um, back in service yet today. Um, and we work through the night and we'll continue to do that uh, up until about 9 or 10 o'clock p.m. tonight. Um, just to give you an idea of the number of crews that we have um, on site. Um, we are already at over 150 crews working today. Um, we will reach a, a total of around 330 or so by the end of tomorrow. Um, that's kind of the equivalent of having about a thousand boots on the ground. Um, that includes line crews, uh, construction crews, tree, tree trimming crews, um, both within the Omaha area and through our mutual aid partners. Um, we'll be making restorations to um, all of our system um, within the 13 county service area, area um, including substation transmission repairs along with distribution, um, both on the main line and uh, throughout the neighborhoods. A um, couple other things is if you are experiencing an outage, we want to remind everyone how to report uh, to OPPD. We know there are challenges getting through the call center line at the height of the storm. Um, those services have been restored, but our main line number is 1-800-554-OPPD. Um, again, that is 1-800-554-6773. Um, you can also report outages at OPPD Connect on our app um, at oppd.com slash outage, and then look for updates on our outage and storm center um, as we continue through the duration of the event. Um, this is the, the largest event we've had in history, exceeding the size of the outage we had back in July of 2021. Um, so this could take some time. <clears throat> in 2021, the outage restoration timeline from start to finish was about seven days. Um, we anticipate something similar in the seven to eight day range from, for all those customers who have the most severe damage or in the nested areas of service. Um, a couple other items I just want to report out on and just remind people about safety. Um, safety is, is the number one priority for OPPD at this time as we go through the restoration effort. Um, if you see a, a, a line that is down, assume it to be hot, say clear and report it to OPPD. If it is in a public right of way or blocking a road, please call 911 so that we can have safety protocols deployed in those areas. And anything on private property, make sure that you're reporting those things to, to OPPD. Um, we do have some mutual aid assistance programs that we'll provide updates on on our website. Um, um, we will have updates as soon as we get that information from some of our mutual aid partners. Um, and um, again, we'll continue the restoration here um, for the next several days with an update of uh, projected about 50% out as restoration by uh, the end of the week. So um, there's a lot of effort going on right now. Um, we'll continue to work diligently. Um, we're working in all areas of our service territory, our four quadrants in the metro, along with our rural areas. Um, with that, that's my update for today. Um, if you have any other questions, we can answer those um, after the rest of the debrief. OPD said at one point it's very difficult to provide accurate estimated restoration times. Can you explain why to customers? Um, yeah, so each each outage is a bit unique in its location and, and occurrence. So in this particular case, if I provide you um, with a, a global ETR, which is what I mentioned in the seven to eight days range, that is from the beginning of the outage situation, which started last night around six o'clock or so, through the last restoration of customers, that could be up to seven or eight days. Different customers have different restoration times depending on location, level of damage, impact the circuits, substations, and transmission in the area. And then you talked about crews, uh, mutual aid. Can you right. talk about where crews are coming from? Yeah, um, let me pull that up for you. Currently we have Ellie Myers crews on site, MPPD, Loop Public Power, RS Electric, Grand Island Utilities, Collective Strategic Resources, and Nebraska Rural Electric Association. 
Um, we also have tree trimming crews from Wright and Asplen um, and additional mutual aid crews potentially coming from Mid-American and then uh, additional tree trimming crews, up to 40 additional crews coming in um, by tomorrow. So, and, then, and, and this season we have seen higher frequency of storms with more strength. <laughs> is there anything OPBD is talking about as it relates to climate change? Um, so as it relates to climate change, we, of course, we have a, you know, a very robust sustainability program. We have, you know, uh, of course, a commitment to decarbonization. You've heard that through our Power and Future 50 2050 goals. Um, you've seen our investments in wind over the years and our recent investments in, um, uh, in solar power as well. As far as the climate change conversation, um, we'll continue to dialogue in that regard and how that impacts system. But from a global proactive measurement, we also have a pretty um, aggressive vegetation management program and that helps mitigate some of these outage durations once storms do come into the area. Chris? This is an unusual weather season, isn't it? This is very unusual. The crews have been working very hard. Um, again, I, I should probably even mention um, that um, safety to our crews is just as important as safety to the public. Um, please give them the space and access to do to do their jobs. They're doing their level best to restore power as quickly as possible. But um, there are a lot of heroes out there right now working these outage restoration efforts. So, um, I know everyone should be uh, back within seven to eight days. That's our projection. That's our projection at this time. But we have damage assessment teams um, out looking and mobilizing on damage in the areas. I should probably have a better idea of what the mm -hmm. restoration time looks like here in the coming days, and we'll report that on storm and outage. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, I wanted to add to what Wendell said earlier, because um, I think this is important for people to understand. If it's a if it's a circuit, a big circuit, and they restore the power, they could restore power to what a thousand or right. or more people. If it goes, if it's a line down in somebody's backyard because of a tree falling down. When they fix those and restore power, it could be two or three houses. So that's when it goes much slower, when they got to get into these individual backyards for power lines down. And that's important to remember. Read my mind. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so are there different types of customers that uh, are, it's going to take longer to get to, uh, like if the power line is down in your backyard? Mm -hmm. and. If a power line is down in somebody's backyard, maybe somebody in this room, uh, maybe somebody's relatives or people we interviewed last night, uh, what should they do? Well, the number one thing is ours reporting the outages. So you may see a circuit come online and our circuit, our customer outage numbers come down. But if you are still experiencing an outage, please report that at OPP.com or on our 1-800 call center line. Um, as far as tree debris goes, dense tree areas with overhead lines tend to have the longest duration of outage. Now, depending on the area, level of trimming, um, access to property, that can take more or less time. Um, but if, if you kind of prescriptively describe it, um, those are some of the areas that we'll be looking at in our damage assessment today. And if there's trees uh, that have knocked out power uh, in people's yards or uh, you know to their own power lines or power lines, will OPPD do what it takes to get through those trees to hook up the power? We'll, we'll do enough trimming to make the, the area safe um, to go in and restore power, replace poles and wires as necessary. Um, kind of to Austin's point, um, we will not remove down trees and debris in private property, um, only in those right of way areas where we absolutely need to do that. But we will trim enough to make the area safe and restore power. For the down uh, power poles, is there, do you guys have enough uh, excess poles to replace those that are snapped, or is there any concern about getting We We keep an adequate amount of uh, safety stock, so we're fully supplied on poles. Um, and we have access to other area utilities to help supplement when needed. I wanted to follow up to Alex's question. You mentioned climate change and this being an unusual storm season. As that tends to continue, are you guys thinking about different infrastructure to keep the power grid, you know, active during these times? Um, we do. We do. Um, I, I would say we do a tremendous amount of work as far as it comes to having a more resilient system, a more reliable system. Um, we do track our reliability statistics accordingly. Um, and so we'll do some um, system hardening um, in that regard and we'll continue to invest in that space. Can you explain to people what happens when the 
power is pulled away from your house when your lines are away from it. Yeah. That's not your deal. Right? right, exactly. So in those cases, we're talking about the mass connection to the home where OPPD brings a service wire to the home, attaches to the mass, and then the mass is then what brings power down to your meter socket. The replacement or repair of the mass um, where you receive power from OPPD is responsibility of the homeowner and you'll have to work with your local electricians and permitting authorities to get that repaired for power to be restored. Great question. <coughs> What, what was the most damage you guys have seen so far? Um, it's it's typically it's been broken poles, trees that are pulling down lines and snapping pole line, um, whether it be on transmission level um, outages or at distribution. That's generally the issue. Um, this was a unique storm, so we did have some wind related outages as well. Um, so really, it comes down to pole down, line down, um, tree on property, that kind of thing. So following up on John's question, should uh, if people did have that power mast or whatever that, that, that broke off their house sure. or that appeared to be damaged, what should they call an electrician and try to get in line to get somebody to fix that because OPPD won't be able to do that yourself? That's correct. You'll need to call the electrician right away if you've seen that pole detach from the home or there's damage to the meter socket, that's a responsibility of the homeowner to call the electrician. You should do that right away.